Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. I am back from Kenya. Lots has happened here while I was gone. Of course, the entire time that I have been uh, gone was the coldest week of the year so far. It was, you know, negative uh, below zero temperatures, uh, negative teens for the wind chill. And my wife worked hard over here, keeping this place warm. And uh, let me show you how much wood she burned through in that, just that amount of time. It was just, it was basically 10, what was 10, 12 days? A lot of wood. If you remember, I had a stack from the end of the truck here all the way down that landscaping, about four feet high. It was a good, uh, probably two, maybe three face cords of wood that she burned through. This thing was hungry. And then she also burned through another face cord right here and then probably another face cord right back there. So we burned through uh, probably probably four face cords or more of wood. That well, was a lot. Uh, I still have this over here and uh, I've got, uh, I cleaned up a lot of this pile. And this is what I have left to split with the wood that I had collected uh, throughout the spring and summer. This will be the first year that I will actually keep track. I'm gonna measure uh, every stack of wood that I go through. So next year I will have a, a better estimate of how much wood I actually burn. Um, I've never really kept track and so I'm always guessing. And, and I, you always burn through more than you think. You know, I, I look at all this wood and I've got, you know, face cord after face cord uh, stacked up and, and I think, oh, this is gonna be plenty. And then, uh, you know, you get a hit a cold snap and, and we burn through a lot. Now it's warmer, so we won't burn through the next couple weeks. We're not gonna really burn that much. I mean, we'll probably burn one face cord. It just is totally different when it's in the 40s. The house is kind of solar passive heated. And so the furnace barely runs except for at night and, and just use a little bit of hot water. But let me show you a struggle I have every year. Every, every year I've burned wood. This has always been a, a dilemma that I've had. Ever since the farm, I have uh, wondered, is it really worth it? <laughs> To, to to manage uh, some of these larger chunks of wood. This is maple, you know, it's been sitting for almost a year uh, and, you know, it's not really seasoned because it wasn't split, but it's a little drier than something green, I guess. But man, are these things heavy and they're so difficult to manage. They're so hard to get underneath the splitter just right. I'm using the tractor, I'm moving them all over, I'm pushing the splitter out of the way. Things are, it, it's a, it's difficult. So I tried to shave off a flat edge here that I could get up into the splitter with the tractor because these edges here prevent, prevent it from going all the way under there. And I've actually, from man, you know, manhandling these larger pieces, I've actually started to bend out the, the channel as this, uh, as this thing comes down there, it was, it's just pushing it out so much. Uh, just because of the, the way that this is shaped and and man these things just don't want to split i had a heck of a time so i'm going to try something a little different i don't know how hard it's going to be to cut through these rip through these i want what i want to do is cut in them in half and so i think most of these i can cut in half this one i can roll over there you know some of these are small enough i think i can i can manage but uh i'm going to try to cut some of these in half especially that big one and then probably this one right here uh, and then probably this one. So let me see if I can if I can do that. Let me show you what I'm going to use. I only have a 20 inch version of this, so I don't have a, a, a 24 inch, unfortunately, for my bigger saw. But so we we'll use the, the Husqvarna Rancher 455 today. And I have this semi chisel chain that I think will is a ripping chain. <laughs> I've never used one of these before, so I ordered this uh, last year, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is the right one anyway. So we'll give this a shot. I'll uh, throw this on the on the saw and see if this will help me rip through the uh, the logs. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, basically most chainsaws are, are designed for a cross cut. They're, they're designed to be you know cutting across the grain. When you cut with the grain, it, 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 it's a little different. And so I think that the semi-chisel tooth will manage that better. It's supposed to, to rip through them this way. Let's see what happens.
brand new chain. <laughs> I don't think I think I don't think this is my crooked bar. I had a bar that was bent, but it's just maybe it was the difference in the hardness cutting through the center. That's uh, that's really weird. It just won't cut straight. Well, I guess I'll just finish the cut. Then I'll still get it into a smaller piece. But that's uh, that's weird. It's definitely, uh, you know, it, it gives you gives you these real long uh, shreds coming out of it when you're cutting, cutting that way when you're ripping. I don't think it's worth it to fight through this. Um, I'm not sure what what is happening. I'm not sure why when I cut this way, it just kept curving like I couldn't keep it straight. So then I thought I would come onto the backside and cut, you know, finish my cut because my 20 inch bar doesn't doesn't uh, won't cut all the way through, and then it started cutting all kinds of different directions <laughs> didn't follow the cut so it's just this is not a good so i'm wasting all this time again this is why i i just always debate when i have pieces this big if it's worth it or not but since i've already got it here i'm gonna try to fight this thing under the splitter i'm just gonna try to fight these things under the splitter i may uh, try to take the saw and like maybe just lop a top piece off that maybe i can get a straight cut going through there or, or cutting it that way so i can get a flat side on these bigger pieces right ready to watch me struggle with a giant piece of wood just so much time invested i hate to do this but Okay, that took me 12 minutes. And then when I got it underneath here, guess what? <laughs> it's about a half an inch too thick. Uh, well, I gotta cut it. I gotta cut a, a sliver off the top here. But we're making progress. Well, I think I've answered that question once and for all. <laughs> I took all those things and dumped them in the valley over there. Uh, there's another one that I gave up on earlier this year. I spent all that time. This is it. <laughs> this little bit. Some of that was already there. This is this is all I got. Uh, basically two hours worth of work struggling with that one giant log. So I think I'm done with that. 
uh, we'll do a little test here. A lot of times what happens is, you know, people will call. I had a friend of mine who uh, called this last spring and, you know, helped him cut down some trees and haul the wood away. And you know, I wanted to take all of it. They, they wanted to get rid of it all. So that was part of the deal is that I took even the stump, you know, the, the, the lowest part. But those stumps are just, they just don't split. I mean, it just had held moisture for almost a year. It was a mess. I mean, those things were just fighting with that. They're so heavy. Uh, I, ended up hurting my, <laughs> I ended up hurting myself. I, you know, bleeding. I, it just isn't worth it. It's not worth the time for me, I think, to fight with those. So I think from now on, I'll take those stumps, but I'll I'll just uh, I'll just dump them or, or start a fire and burn them in the summer or something. Uh, let's see how much wood I can get and how long it takes me with just cutting down a fresh tree that's smaller and easier to deal with. So this one here is a standing dead. It's uh, something I might even be too dead. I'm not sure how long it's been here. It looks like it might even be rotted. We'll see if there's anything usable uh, in there. This is much easier to deal with. I can cut this up, uh, haul it. Uh, just over to my my splitter over there and split and stack it and uh, it should be a lot easier Well, I think I have my answer. <laughs> this is all the wood that was split, and plus I added a bunch to that pile, all the, the smaller stuff that I won't split, branches and other stuff. So probably three times as much processed wood in half the time. So this took me about an hour. That includes cutting the tree down, sawing it all up, getting the tractor over there, hauling it all back, and I, I did it one bucket at a time. That way I could pull the bucket right up and I never had to bend over and pick stuff up. So rather than bringing all the wood over here and dumping it in a pile, then splitting it, I split it bucket load by bucket load right as I grabbed it, which was really nice. And now it's all split and it's right here. And I'm gonna stack it uh, right in this area between the trees. So it's real, real close. Way less wear and tear on equipment, less fuel. I mean, look at look at what I did to this, the splitter. Look at that, bent that whole thing up. Pulling, a, it's all, you can see it's bent on an angle backwards now. I'm not sure how to fix that. I could probably try to heat this up and pound it down, but. So I think I, <laughs> From now on, I think if I have to take stumps from people or the, the base of these trees, then I'm gonna bring it home and just dump it in the valley. It's a lot nicer piled here. Lots and lots more wood. I always underestimate how much I'll need, but I got closer this year. <laughs> we got through February with what I had already collected for the year. Uh, I kind of thought we would be closer to April, but that's okay. Uh, I only will run the, the boiler this year until the first week of April. After that, I, I will uh, I'll shut it down. And so I have about a month. I have about six weeks left to run this. And then uh, that's all I need. So what are you doing? I'm cold. <laughs> well, come over here and lift this wood with me. Stack this wood. What? Come over and stack this wood with me. It'll warm you up. Mm -mm. Come on. It'll be fun. Well, there it is all stacked. That is uh, almost two face cords, actually. It doesn't look like it because it's short, but it's 18 feet long, and uh, I averaged it to about 18 inches in width, and it's about three feet high. So that equals, uh, what was it, 80, over 80 uh, square feet or cubic feet, and a, a face cord is about 40 cubic feet. So, well, stick around for the next video or uh, a video to come soon. I'll be uh, working on a system to pull logs out of the valley. I'll show you that on another video. Uh, we have a lot of oak trees, real nice good sized oak trees that have been down for years and they're ready to burn. And so I need to get them out of there though and it's gonna be a challenge. Lots more wood to prepare uh, to get us through this season 
and uh, it won't be long. I need to start preparing for next season. I've got a good plan for that too. I've got quite a few big trees to take down this spring. Thumbs up on today's video. Let me know what you guys think. Also, before another video I have planned, let me know what is your favorite chainsaw chain brand uh, between Steel, Husqvarna, Oregon, or Archer, an Australian brand. I might try to do a head-to-head -head comparison between the three. I have tried them all now, and I think I have a favorite. Let me know what you guys think. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.